<laughs> so yeah, how about how about Get Hard Out? And it's it's Get Out, but with Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. Right. Okay. That's and cool. It, yeah. And or it's Get Hard Out, where a white woman abducts a black guy to uh, just get him horny. He Will, no, Will Ferrell puts himself in Kevin Hart's body, so he wants to go to jail, but then he immediately gets arrested for a crime he didn't commit. Yes. Yes. That's that's I think the this movie. Is good. That's I the think movie. This is good. <laughs> you could also get do you know get hard days night and it's just the Beatles all whacking each other off. Why? Yeah, you yes. know what? That'd be good. Yeah, get hard days night and it's a yeah. it's a Beatles gangbang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the whole movie. That's I'll good. bet that exists somewhere in some like sixties British gay den. Yeah. Gay, it's so funny that the Beatles, somebody somebody else said this, but the Beatles did like invent gooning. Like they were just like taking psychedelics and beating off. <laughs> that's why they're called the Beatles. <laughs> they, yeah, that's, right. that's, that's, that's where they got the name, yeah. yeah, from yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what if we what if we spelled it after what we love to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I was you know, this just this whole conversation makes me think. No no one has had the balls in Hollywood yet to do a body swap movie but where it's a white person and a black person to switch bodies mm-hmm. haven't they? i i feel like that that's has basically not... that's trading places basically it is yes and, they, and, and they actually i think there is there is a movie where somebody it's not that they swap bodies it's that he wakes up as a black man oh uh, that is a little dicky video <laughs> remember that Oh, yes, it's there's that a little Dicky video. It's that Rob Schneider. It's that Rob Schneider movie, The Hot Nig. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Have you? Yes. Did you see? Did you see the, the the sequel where he becomes an Asian? <laughs> you go. <laughs> no, go ahead, Nick. Don't. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> Run it back. <laughs> it, well, no, I heard that. It's listen. It's like jazz. It's about the the slurs you don't say. <laughs> uh, I heard that that was his pitch for the animal, and they were like, "Rob, you should just make it a literal animal." <laughs> and mm. uh, but uh, I mean, it was the same exact <laughs> script and the same exact. Uh, <laughs> that's how he thinks black people conduct themselves. Yeah. How about Deuce? How about Deuce Bigelow, male Nigolo? Folks, welcome yeah, to the that's show. That's pretty good. Yeah, welcome to the show. <laughs> Nick Nick Oldershaw, Nick Oldershaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Deuce. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How about Deuce the Right Bigelow? And uh, <laughs> we'll get started and here in a minute. It's a, Let's just... <laughs> it's, a male, it's a male man whore going around to uh, racist pizza shops to fuck the owners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's Rob Schneider having gay sex with um with Danny Aiello. Danny Aiello. I, I was about to Danny say Paul Dano. Yeah. I, was about, <laughs> I was about to say Paul Dano, but it's Danny Aiello. I got him confused. How about Paul Danny Aiello? And he's like, the, the, I'm the joke over here. Imagine if it was Paul Dano. Turn the speakers off. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what they did in uh, There Will Be Blood, because I feel like that character is very against type for Paul Dano. Yes. Well, like, he, that seems like okay. that'd be more of like a you know that the, he had to prepare for that role in like two days. There were right. Because yeah. he, he, he was supposed he to was, play the He brother. was just supposed to play. Uh, they weren't supposed to be twin brothers. He was just supposed to play the guy who tells Daniel about the oil. And then the guy who was supposed. And funnily enough, and that character was named Paul. And the original guy who played Eli, I think his real name, everybody had their own names. And the guy who was originally playing Eli got fired. And Paul Dano took over the role. And I don't think that guy. Has he been in movies since then? I think it kind of like shook him away from wow. like working in the industry. That's a funny way to describe movies, though. Everybody had their own names. It's like, yeah, I think every character has their own name. No, no, no. But everybody, no. But like Paul, Daniel, Eli, they all like their characters had. Oh, you mean uh, they had the actors' names? They had the actors' names. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, wow. I thought you were oh, like wow. each character had a name. It's like, yes, you know, that happens a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <what's>, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul Thomas Anderson wrote it like you write a sketch in like like in UCB like all right Robbie says this Dalton says this yes yeah that's pretty funny um I was Nick and I were talking about the Jim Downey episode of uh, Conan the podcast and Jim Downey is in there will be blood because Paul Thomas Anderson like loves him and I think I, I forgot what this did you get to that part yet Nick uh no but, you know, I only listened to the eleven minute clip where they were talking about. 
um, Norm, and then it flipped over to a different episode. Okay. Well, if I recall, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson offered him a role in The Ruby Blood, and I think Jim Downey thought he was, like, fucking with him because he's not an actor. And, like, Robert Smigel, I guess, like, had to, like, knock on his door and be like, hey, why are you blowing off Paul Thomas Anderson? <laughs> like, he had to, like, <laughs> he, like call, he's like... He, I, I, I might be fucking up the story, but it's something like that where he like almost wasn't in it because he just thought it was like a, a bit. That's right. so funny. Yeah, like and I think the same thing. Like, um, Paul F. Tompkins is in it. Paul F. Tompkins has like two lines. He's the guy who runs out saying, "Mr. Plainview, Mr. Plainview, come yeah, back." Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 Man, I love. I'm so glad that Daniel Day Lewis like screamed in his face. That's so nice to imagine. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, dude. His bow tie spun around. <laughs> and, and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah his cigar exploded and his bow tie spun around <laughs> of COVID, like in 2023 imagine how afraid he was of daniel day lewis and daniel playing just screaming in his face and then when the camera's cut <laughs> and when the camera's cut he's not like i'm just kidding by the way it's a character he's like i'm actually this guy and i'm actually mad at you <laughs> and you know that daniel, daniel, daniel day lewis we saw that he put like authentic 19th century germs in his mouth too before he spit on uh, Paul Thomas, Paul F. Tompkins. Mm -hmm. Get that like that me that degree method acting because if he was actually method acting, when you like look at a camera, and be like, what the fuck is that? You know, like when you like be like <laughs> baffled by. <laughs> That's a good point, Rod. I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah, it he should have run sense. off the set screaming. Yeah. What sorcery? <laughs> Are There's these... devils around me. Yeah, is there is there an <laughs> imp inside of this machinery? That'd be god, man. That'd be so. Every time you do a movie set like before the 1850s, you're just racist to every black crew member on set. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like that's probably what Jim Carrey did as Andy Kaufman, oh <laughs> man on the moon. I heard that he like he behaved like a way bigger dickhead than Andy Kaufman actually did. I heard that. Yeah, so that I think that's like yeah, totally. Yeah, wasn't it well, like a, that? That one wrestler's family was like, what the fuck is this guy's deal? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah, because it doesn't make any sense because Jim Carrey acted like Andy Kaufman doing an Andy Kaufman character. But Andy Kaufman himself wasn't like that in every Andy life. Kaufman didn't even talk like that. No. Yeah. He basically acted like Andy Kaufman on Letterman, but 24-7, which is very, yeah. like, what's the point of that? Yeah, Pretty gay. Well, Jim Carrey is a uh, is a is a mental retard of the highest order who. But sometimes kills his it pays off. Sometimes it pays off in incredible performances like The Grinch. Only a true psychopath. <laughs> yeah, I love I, I, I love that for Jim Carrey. His like magnum opus, like what he sees. It seems like he seems to feel the most fulfilled in his entire career in cinema playing Doctor Robotnik. Yes, he's great in it too. He's, he's very good classic. in both of them. He he is good at that, but it's. The way he's like acted about those movies and talked about them is he seems to derive like a lot of joy and fulfillment from being Dr. Eggman. Well, it comes through in the movie because I watched that movie and I'm like, oh, I didn't realize Jim Carrey had been phoning in everything else he's been doing <laughs> since 2003. Yeah, I know. Where was this for Mr. Popper's Penguins? Ah, yeah, I, I was just about to say. Or Yes Man. Yeah. He did yes not give anything. <laughs> he's done Fun so many Jane. he's done so many turds like so many just like dog shit like uh similar movie like cookie cutter type movies that like that uh leap day william thing they did in 30 rock where he played you know jim carrey playing that character mm -hmm. is just making fun of his career like they they boiled yeah. it down to its essence where he's like running mm -hmm. and he's like i fixed my relationship with my son and i told my wife i love her and i won the big case <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking at his filmography now. He didn't have a single good movie between Eternal Sunshine and Sonic. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what? The gay sex movie's good. Oh, I love. Oh, that's you. a good oh. one. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. that's a good movie. And uh, the TV show's all right. The uh, kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> Where's it kidding. I didn't see it. I, I, I heard it was good, but I could not bring myself to watch it. Yeah, it's very Michelle Gondry, uh, quirky. It's good, and he's good in it. It's a bummer. If I recall. It's a fucking bummer, yeah. dude. It's such it's a not sad a fun show. show to watch. No. Yeah. Did you like um, it, Dalton? I saw the first season. And I just was like, man, I'm fucking sad as shit right now. This is so sad. Yeah. Uh oh, Barry Rothbart's in it. Remember him? 
Barry Rothbard. Yes, so I did a show with Barry Rothbard at the Alamo Draft House. In, early uh, life. What? Is he early, <laughs> is he an early life? Early lifer? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I have no idea what you're talking about. Roth, um, Rothbard. <laughs> Dude, do you remember Barry Rothbard? Is, is one of those guys. He was. He's nice for sure, but he's one of those guys where it's like he has a Rogan episode and it only has like five hundred thousand views. You know, like he oh, he really? like he was on it just before it made you a star. Oh um, yeah, well because he, he was big in twenty. When I moved to LA, I got him on my stand up show and I was like, this is a big get because he's in Wolf of Wall Street. I know yeah, this yeah. guy. His, I, his, I, his, I, his opened... act was about being in Wolf of Wall Street when I, I when I uh, did a guest spot for him. Yeah, I know this guy. Yeah. I opened for him years ago at Hyenas. We had pizza together. He's a nice guy. And he did something psychotic that I've never seen anyone do. He put salt on his pizza. Ah, mm. well, if the, maybe if the sauce is sweet. I heard he lived in those tunnels. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh man, folks, the the magic of the magic of. I'm. Us. I listen when we talk about this. I have to like keep all. I have to. Get, I've got to keep like my my weights on, like Piccolo, because if I take them off, it'll you'll never be able to release this podcast. I know. <laughs> I just. Uh, I don't speak. <laughs> I just. I just slip back into loud boys mode when I, I'm on Zoom. Zoom with you guys. Yeah. Where it was yeah. the pandemic when you truly could say anything. It felt like it's. A, yeah, this is a reunion. I mean, it was over, and now now we're back folks um i didn't know that it was jeb bush coined that term like both of those it's over and we're back he tweeted that or something right like it was i thought you coined it dalton honestly because i remember you'd start every you'd start like every loud boys episode by going we're back no i just steal everything but i no, i i think i just (laughs) had like picked it up through like some sort of like social media osmosis like i'd I'd seen it before and Mm -hmm. it was just like a fun thing to say and it's not, I mean, about, I don't know, it's, it's two words, so. How about Osmosis Jonestown? That's good. And, uh. That's good, yeah. And mm-hmm. it's. Eight. Drink, drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, it's, Something it's, like it's the movie, it's like if the, <laughs> if, it, if Bill Murray got AIDS and then all the white blood cells in his body were ritualistically committing suicide. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the, no, that's the twist actually, is that it's like, it's a, uh, the white blood cells are. Yeah, they're trying as hard as they can to save somebody from dying of being sick, and then the and then the twist at the end is that guy's in Jonestown and he drinks. The yeah, there are. Right. Oh, thank you guys for the sort of like yeah, that yeah. Robert Pattinson nine eleven movie. Like, we yeah, and that's back. exactly yes. what it's like. Yeah, yes. yeah, we zoom out and we see Jim Jones in a <laughs> chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there was yeah. nothing leading up to that. There was no indication that that was going to happen. Thank you guys for the assist on that. Wow, because I I felt like I was like I'm going to be buried in deep on that one. But See, I said no, it no, 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 we would never. That's what they said. They say every writer's room like the optimum number is like three people just bouncing yeah. ideas around. I kind of feel that way about podcasting too. Like I feel like three is like the perfect amount. The perfect amount of pepper. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's Nick and I. Were, by the way, Nick and I were also talking about the to, to wind it back a little bit. Bill Murray also not in that many good movies. In in terms of movies that are comedies, there's maybe like two that he's good in. He got way better. That's why, and I'll extend this to it's why it's sad we never got to see John Candy reach Bill Murray's age because I think John Candy's funnier than Bill Murray. But man, I would love mm-hmm. to see him in like old Bill Murray roles. Oh yeah, yeah. well because you think of him as like the '80s guy, right? The, like because the '90s stuff was all like kind of a commentary on his '80s stuff, right? In a way. Yes. Um, but yeah, there's really just Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Ghostbusters, and, and a Scrooge is he's Scrooge is pretty good. Groundhog Scrooge, Day. Scrooge but, is but good. Scrooge, you know what? Scrooge is also kind of Ghostbusters. Like, uh, it, yeah, yeah. I think Scrooge is about half good. That's my take. He's good in it though. It's a good dry run for uh, Groundhog Day. I think his nineties yes. is great. His nineties is fantastic. Steve you got Sulu. What about Bob? By the way, the What About Rob podcast everywhere you go to. Right. What about, uh, yes, of course. Yes. It, uh, what about Rob podcast? Uh, Nick is um, in Chicago. I just, I just do. I just do stand up. If you want to see me, come come to Chicago and catch everybody me. SWAT Nick. Uh, he's in Chicago. He's a free agent. <laughs> Dude, not, there's not enough room in this apartment to SWAT me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, nobody, nobody that lives in a shitty apartment ever gets SWATed. It's always like. <laughs> Big time Twitch streamers in their fucking man. Yeah, they always have time to hear them because they always like they're like they always hear people coming upstairs. I don't have that luxury. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I if I got swatted, it would just be like 
four other people that I live with being like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, was like, I was playing Grand Theft Auto. I didn't, I didn't mean for this to happen. <laughs> they Did fish tank get swatted? The yeah. Sam Hyde thing? Do what? Did, Did it? fish tank get I, swatted? I the... thought that was a joke. I, I, know. I didn't think that there was a, happened. There was a wellness check, and that's happened both times, I think. Both times they've done fish tank, they've like called cops to do wellness check, which is actually like what that is correct. <laughs> like that, 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 dude, that I, is, that I, yeah. I gotta be honest, Sam hides off the of fucking rails. I don't like fish tank. It's it seems too mean spirited. Yeah, fish tank. Uh, this season especially is like every time I've checked in, I've just been like, oh, this is this is this should not be happening. Yeah, I, I saw something where they, it kind of reminds me. Go ahead. The difference between season one and two reminds me of like Ren and Stimpy versus like the reboot of Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> whereas like se- season two, like kind of skirted the line pretty well. I mean, it was already evil and mean spirited, but I feel like he like leaned into that way too much. And this one, I also don't haven't watched too much of both, but that's that's the impression I'm getting from people who do watch yeah. a lot of it. I, I I was like an ardent MDE apologist for a while, and like the more I see of Sam Hyde, the more I'm like, yeah, this guy kind of, this guy seems like a real piece of shit. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think the thing that's creepy about him, aside from like all the obvious shit, is like the fact that he will just do like actual self help advice videos. Oh, yeah. And he'll just, he will say stuff that, and it's scary because like he'll start with a seed of like, okay, I can see that. But if you finish it, you're like, this guy's nuts. And kids are really listening to him. Yeah. I've you watched some of that self help stuff and it is like malevolent. it it starts out sounding like you should cut toxic friends out of your life and then and then it's like look into the woods go into a cabin buy some fertilizer and i'm like all right like i don't i also feel like it's the only self-help i've seen where anyone who listens to is just going to feel worse about themselves by the end of what he's talking yeah yeah that's that's how i I stopped i stopped paying attention to anything he's he's been doing because he yeah, he just comes across as like very uh, insidious, and like that, that. That's the thing with Fish Tank is it's like, it, w- w- I don't even know what the prize is, but it ain't worth it. Like I oh, saw, it's, it's it's like fifty grand, I think. Yeah, I saw oh, something that's pretty good. Yeah, that's as much as the NBA in season tournament. <laughs> I saw yeah. something where there was a guy, and we'll, we'll start the show here in a minute. I saw something where there was a guy who was bowing up to this girl. And it was uh, it was already a fucking problem. Oh was, yes, dude, that guy. Yeah, oh yeah, and, and, I saw that. Yeah, and Sam is standing across the room, like I I guess like he he had to have known that this was going to escalate. Like he's waiting, yeah. he wants something to happen. Yeah, because th- this guy's clearly about to wail on this girl. And well, when he when he it's... finally steps to her and he's about to put hands on her is when Sam fi- Sam finally steps in, but the like. The in the tone of that guy's voice and just his stance, like everything indicated to me, like, yeah, this guy's about to beat up this woman. You should so stay. Did, yeah. Dalton, did you see the follow up to that? No. It, what what that escalated to was later in the show, he threw a croquet mallet at her that allegedly hit her. And he <laughs> That's what I saw. Three. Like the book, and... The Shining, like the fucking mallet. That he uses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like Stephen Weber, Jack. Boy. Yeah, the Stephen oh, Weber yeah. Shining. Yeah, but, but, uh, but, huh. and so he, so then all work like, okay. and no Jebediah Gold Striker makes Fish Tank a bad place to be, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they kicked him off the show, and I was like, all right, responsible thing to do. Then they brought him back. They brought him back to have him like do challenges, and it's like, all right, come on, man. Like this, like you know, this guy's not safe to have around. This isn't funny. No, yeah, Sam, Sam's I'll a troll. It. He gets off on just like being a, a dickhead. Yeah, I think. I think the, he's a, no. I think he's a nice guy. If you really pay attention, he, yeah. Well, that's yeah, the thing. He, 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 there's times I've listened <laughs> to him where he seems level headed, and then there's other times where I'm like. This is an unhinged sociopath. This guy is like, j- just wants yeah. to stir the pot and like get people to the boiling point for his own like yuck yucks. Because he yeah. obviously has the talent to do cool shit, and he's utilizing his like powers for evil. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I exactly. love when he rants about like the like the degradation of society, and it's like, yeah. like you are the cre- co creator of Fish Tank. Like, yeah. you're having yeah. people like shit in buckets and beat each other up. 
doing blackface and holding spears and, and yeah. do, doing like ooga booga. That was, I mean, that was crazy. I was like, why are you doing this to them? Because he thinks it's funny to I, ruin 12 people's lives. Which and is I what will say, Even, whatever that character is, the Ronald McDonald Colonel Sanders plantation owner, funny character. Yeah. That is very funny. Character. Uh, I talked but, about this with our friend uh, Sam on, on Line Boy. Sam is such a very bizarre mix of very silly and very evil. And so he'll do something very silly that'll really make me laugh, but then I'll just get too evil or something. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, um one last thing at Skankfest, I was talking to our our uh, mutual friend Cassie, and well, she was just in the circle, and we were, and I was talking to someone else about Sam Hyde at the sh- at the thing, and she's like, "Wait, who are you talking about?" I was like, "Oh, have you seen that big ugly guy?" And she immediately was like, "Oh, that guy!" Like just <laughs> from the descriptor, big ugly guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he and I are kindred in that way because I I look I've not really by, on purpose, but definitely look as bad as I've ever looked and yeah. <laughs> have garnered the attention of more beautiful women than I ever have. Hey, I'm, dude, you know what, dude? It's a flex. It is a looking looking bad and not caring is yeah. a huge flex. Women it's, asking it's me to look at their titties and comment on them. <laughs> you yeah, think you're going to find a wife this way? I think so, yeah. I'm going to marry me an OnlyFans girl. Yeah, nice. you know what? That's exactly that's what perfect. You need. Yeah, I think that <laughs> that'll, go that'll provide the stability I need as I move forward in life. Is uh, that's it, y'all? I'm done with having mental breaks. Immediately marries a whore. <laughs> hey, look, wow. she'll pay. She'll pay my cell phone bill. She'll pay my cell phone bill. Uh, uh men will literally marry an OnlyFans girl before going to therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but that, that would literally be Patreon BF OnlyFans GF. Mm-hmm. Yes, it yep. would. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. That you know what? That now, Dalton, you, let me ask you a personal question. If you get with an OnlyFans girl, are you gonna will you like fuck him on camera? Will you put on like a V for Vendetta mask and, and yeah, dick yeah, I'll down? put on a guy fox mask and let her hit me in the Amazon position, sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do it Amazon style. <laughs> <laughs> uh I want to see that. I want to see you in like an executioner's hood fucking your girlfriend anonymously. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that. I mean, you know, probably would probably wouldn't be too anonymous. Like you would hear my voice and be like, "Yeah, I, oh, the, <laughs> the, the titty fun. review guy." <laughs> you start reviews. You should do a rack reaction mid fuck while I'm fucking my girl. Yeah, that'd be while cool. While you're fucking, her. yeah. Hey, y'all. Or you yeah. could do an audio commentary on it. Mm-hmm. Actually, you should do it. You should do it while another guy is fucking your girlfriend. You, like she's getting <laughs> fucked really good, and then you walk into frame. Hey y'all! Cut commentary. Yeah, cut com- <laughs> Yeah, cut commentary. <laughs> yeah. Director's cut cut. commentary. Yeah, Director's on the cut commentary. Oh, yeah, it's only available on the 4K Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting back to physical media, folks. I think it's good to own a bunch of shit that clutters up your house. Absolutely. I am actually. I do think physical media should make a comeback. Um. Sure you like, fr- look at this. Look did you watch that Netflix right? movie? Um. We're, the Netflix I'm, movie, I'm the uh, media only Obama's right now, dude. Oh fuck this! God damn it, my background's fucking it up. Oh yeah, Nick, oh, well. you have looked insane the entire show so far. You because <laughs> like, I, yeah. I know because I got the a woman in the back of me. Yeah, no, it, not just not that. As funny as I thought. It's what? it's like it's also like casting onto your teeth and oh, your really? eyes. Yeah, dude, you look crazy. <laughs> fuck. All right, I'm gonna get rid of it. No, that's fine. Keep it. No, um, no, no. It's it's not as funny as I thought it would be anyway, folks. I thought it was Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, it is Caitlyn Jenner. Who, who was that? Uh, that was Meg. That was Meg Foster, who I always get confused with Dale Dickey. Okay, <laughs> and, and folks, now we start the show, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The, the magic. Of Wait, I want to see next DVDs. Uh, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just blow out in after hours and chimes at midnight. It doesn't matter. Okay, I mean, just nice. Just, American, you know, American masterpieces. Yeah, yeah you know, cinema. I saw chimes at midnight at uh, this. Is, is it good? Do you like Chimes of Midnight? I uh, Chimes of Midnight is a very dear movie to me, uh, specifically because like I do like it, and me and my grandfather bonded over it. Oh, that's nice. I saw it at the old uh, Cine Family on a bad date, and I'm wondering if I don't like the movie or if, this is a ba- if the date was bad. Well, if you don't like Shakespeare, it's like if you're not really I like Shakespeare. Shakespeare. 
Well, the, I mean, it's cool. The thing that's cool about Chimes at Midnight is that it like it like blends like five different Shakespeare texts into one movie. All all the ones that you know John Falstaff is in. So like mm. it's kind of I don't know if a movie had done that like before that like 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 blended the texts together into one thing. And so that's kind of cool. And the battle scene is really cool. The battle scene looks like Saving Private Ryan. But um, I'll give another shot because I was I also was not very um, educated on Orson Welles before, but I'm a, I'm a I'm a big fan now. Yeah, it, I, I, I'll I'll even like the movie has parts where like it's definitely aged, but all the shit between him and the and the prince, like all the shit about like Falstaff's friendship with uh, the prince is really good, and the, nice. the stuff where he's like womanizing like the women in the is not as it's a little sillier, but it, I, I, I love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I like Shakespeare. I like that Amanda Bynes movie. Uh, she's the man. <laughs> oh, she's the man. <laughs> yeah, the twelfth the twelfth night. In that. Yeah, the twelfth night movie. <laughs> yeah david cross is funny in that movie too yeah he's the best yeah. part he's good yeah he can be good and stuff he's good in the squeakle he's good in chipwreck <laughs> <laughs> remember when people got mad at him for like selling those movies out yeah i remember he he was like go, he, he was on conan when that came out i think it was chipwrecked and he was just like don't go see the movie it sucks <laughs> that's so awesome yeah <laughs> yeah well because he was mad they made him go on a cruise I think that's probably why people are like, okay, dude. Damn, I would love wow, to be. Did they su- film? Did they actually film it on a cruise ship? Yeah, they had. They that's made him. Said. They made him wear the like the costume, it, and so it's like he's his face is not even in the shot or whatever. Like I don't know. Like I, I would love to be successful enough that I'm annoyed about having to go on a cruise because that's. I think that's, just, that's why people thought it was tone deaf. Like he didn't say like it's a bad movie. Don't see it. It was he was. I don't see it because I was inconvenienced by this cruise. I would love to go on a so cruise. Funny. I dude, it's it's like all these comics complain about having to do cruise ships, but it's like fuck, dude. Even if I I'll bomb on a cruise and I'm hitting the casino, dude. Dude, casino, you see, yeah. there's a, a, Adam Sandler's very first movie is him. He's plays like a guy on a cruise ship who Going becomes overboard, a stand up. Yeah, yeah Shecky Moskowitz. Whoa, <laughs> who named that? <laughs> <laughs> So he's always been Jewish. Interesting. That sounds like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it was named by an, that, that sounds like it was written by an anti-Semite. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, what what's this Jewish guy's name, man? Shecky Moskowitz. Shecky Moskowitz. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was that was the guy that crawled out of the sewer. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that was old Shecky oy, Moskowitz. Oy, oy, oy. Shout out John still, Those tunnels are you know what's so funny, man? I posted those. I found out inadvertently through <laughs> getting too excited about the tunnels on the first night that it happened because like all those videos were going up and then i searched tunnels under chabad like for news about it and the first article was actually from like december 23rd so i was like oh i've been fooled uh this is actually like old news that's just getting pushed onto my timeline but no it happened twice (laughs) <laughs> like that's what? What that is that it happened there was a much quieter instance of it that happened like a couple days before well, christmas th- there had to have like been another... because for, for the city to send out like cement trucks in the like the nypd there had to have been like something that happened prior to that yes yes so and it had only been reported on by like local jewish news websites like like <laughs> literally in like like Brooklyn. paypal or oh no that's a yeah. mark that's a mark norman joke sorry yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, forgive me. But so, dude, I was so like, and because I was posting in the group chat, and then when I saw that, I was quite like, oh, I guess I've been, I guess I got fake news again. But no, like, like morning came and I was vindicated as I always am. And I just thought it was, I could not believe that they did it twice. That's so funny. Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. That's well, crazy. Like, uh, I think it probably made news because of like the Israel stuff also, you know. Um, I mean, I think it made news because it's it's crazy to dig unauthorized tunnels in New York City. <laughs> no, like, I, I think it's both. I think it was a combo. It was like a freak, crazy New York City story mixed with like, because like the Hamas tunnels were like such a big part of like. Right. The yeah. Israel narrative thing. So then the irony of Jewish tunnels it's... made it very, I think everyone on social media was like, this is such an easy dub. It's crazy. It's, mm-hmm. It is funny how like that seems to be every single thing where they're actually, no, I think he's the one digging tunnels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's weird is 
I was reading into it, and Don, do you remember that uh, in New York they just slapped that like one guy's like, "Have you met the Messiah?" Like that random ass like rabbi guy on stickers, like on in Union Square and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently they did it because they're like extremist students. I think here from Israel on a visa, and they all believe that this guy is the Messiah. And in like 1985, he said they wanted to expand that particular synagogue. And they were wow. following his decree by building the tunnel to expand it. That's so. I mean, yeah, that's so I, wild. yeah, I, I, yeah. I think the the like that group of Jewish people are they they are like the uh, I guess they are like the ISIS of Jews or something. They're like <laughs> extremists yeah. or something. Yeah, well, well, nice, we're nicest. We're nicest. <laughs> yeah, we're you know what's so funny. I love this detail. So obviously when they were like, obviously there's a lot of dirt and soil that they like couldn't transport. Blood and soil. People would be like, I, yes. <laughs> people would be like, hey, where are, where did all this dirt come from? Like, are you digging under? The so what they did is they just like filled in all the women's restrooms with dirt. <laughs> Which is like, that's so funny to me, dude. That is where they would put it. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, the women aren't allowed to do anything anyway so yes you better yeah. not be pooping in there that's disgusting <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they do yeah they do share a lot of like the same radical views as, as like all those guys who talk about like haram and stuff where it's like a woman shouldn't have her period woman shouldn't yeah i mean they, they, they are they're like being a being a orthodox or hasidic jewish woman is like it's terrifying there, there, yeah. whole, there, there was a documentary about it that I watched on Netflix where I was like, Jesus Christ, these women are having a Yeah, it's probably not that different from being in like a part of like an extremist Muslim society, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. No, actually, I heard that it, that actually. Or Sharia nice. law. What's that? Oh, yeah, Sharia yeah, law is not a big deal. Come on. Right? Yeah, my not my Sharia. Deal. My. Okay. Yes. My, 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 Sharia. my. Hey. You could also do Shakira law, and it's. Uh, my hips don't lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? uh, folks, by the way, sp speaking of Jews, Hollywood, the magic of cinema. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. This is uh, where I seen them before, a celebration mm -hmm. of guys only on the Billionaire Podcast Network. Jing, bing, 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 did he fill her up? Welcome. This is a uh, a jubilee. In How did Mencia get in there? By the way, we we riffed that out uh, on a corn about Rob Fed episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were laughing about D to D, and I was like, I think you said like put that in the station tag. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, Maybe that's why I, I was like, that's a very funny Dalton, and I'm such a narcissist. Of course, it's the thing I said. <laughs> it was fun. It is funny. It's a good addition. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a, this is a jubilee in in which we celebrate the real heroes of Hollywood, the the titans of Tinseltown, the guys, the the unsung of of a uh, film and cinema. But today, the the guy we're talking about is actually a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit a, I hit a mallet on my head. <laughs> yeah. With a guy's name. Out. A girl with a guy's <laughs> name. Um, yeah, at, dude. At first, when you told me that we were doing Dale Dickey, I was like the surf rock guitarist. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I did, I did Google who this person was. Oh, well, you yeah. definitely. She she is one of the ultimate guys because the minute you see her, you're like, oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this horrible she, woman. She looks like like every southern guy's aunt who right just, like, chain smokes. And, right. She, and, uh, she, she oh, had I had so I had Meg Foster up behind me because she and Meg Foster have the same thing. We're like, okay, so like Dale Dickey, and I I watched her and stuff where she had to only be like fifty, and she looks fucking eighty, dude. She's like, always she's, I can't like, I can't find I she, can't find any like photos of her looking young. She's always been a hundred. She, dude, like I. By the way, the, I don't know if you guys watched the movie I recommended, but I watched that movie last night. A love song, beautiful movie, incredible right. film. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when they they do this like cool thing at the beginning where it's like Samurai Jack, where nobody's talking and it's all these like wide distance shots, so you don't even see her really. Yeah. And then like eight minutes into the movie, I think there's finally a shot, like a close up shot of her face, and it scared the shit out of me. I was like, dude, she looks so rough. Dude, it's like it's like some combination of like Leonard Cohen and the Crypt Keeper. 
It was so like the <laughs> dude, the lines in her face are so deep. Yeah, um, yeah dude, she, a... she's got like Tommy Lee Jones face. Like it's crazy. I'm, yeah. But, I'm very but... unlucky I'm attracted to redheads because a lot of them do not age very well at all. It's because no, they have no. like very fair skin. It's the sun attacks their skin. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's obviously like it at least chain smoked at some point in her life. She has all the like markers of somebody who she does have like casino girl fit. Casino she do. She yeah, yeah, she has slot machine face for sure. Um <laughs> uh, she's just sitting in a casino for like 12 hours chain smoking. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, like like a lot of character actors, like Nick Nick and I talked about in the last episode, which we did what like a year ago? <laughs> it's been a no, while. no, no. It was only a couple no, months, it was only a few months ago. It was a few months ago. Yeah, um, this is a sporadic show, I guess, for now. Um, but you know, like a like a lot of these character uh, actors, it, it, like she has such a like distinct features that it works for her for for like what she's able to do in movies in TV. Um, where it's like you know, I guess she doesn't have. I don't know. Like, I don't know what it takes to be a leading person because, like, Giamatti is a beloved, like, leading man now with the, mm-hmm. like, the holdovers. He kind of, he, he's a rare, he's, he was such a ubiquitous character actor that he just, it was kind of like, it was all Alexander Payne casting him in a supporting role and he was just a breakout of that. Mm-hmm. And then because he was such a break, and even still, I would not consider him a leading man. Well, he's he, still character. I, I, but he, but he's more of a he is an ascended character. He's in the realm of like Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, uh, yes. somebody who is known but is not a leading man is like Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi, every, yes. like he might be more famous than Paul Giamatti, but he doesn't lead movies. No, no, just Boardwalk Empire, and even that felt like it rang with the dead a little bit. Yeah, like it's, it's funny. It's... Steve Buscemi comes close in a lot of movies, like Reservoir Dogs and Fargo. I would argue he's almost like the the biggest character. And yes, he's not the lead. They're all, those are both ensembles. Yeah, well, there, there's times but, when like a character actor will swoop in and maybe only be in the movie a few minutes, but they just like kill it so hard that you're like, mm-hmm. that's all you remember. I do think Reds of Our Dogs. He is the main character, though. I think he he has the the main character arc. I think he, he is yes, the victor, but that's. He's, but it's that's a total ensemble. His face is yeah. not on the. I mean, it's it's Reservoir Dogs. All the posters are like eight people on it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Tarantino put his ugly mug on every poster. I think it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's barely. <laughs> in it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like what the distinction? Like how somebody settles into <laughs> be what's what's going on? Are you in trouble? No, uh, don't address that. No, don't no address okay. that. There's dinner. Okay. There's dinner for me. That's what, I, okay. that's what I'm hearing. I'm not um, have to leave. In like take minutes. us down there, dude. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Like how, like what leads someone to settle into the the character uh, work. Uh, but uh, we need we need they're not attractive. They're not yeah, attractive. That's what it is. <laughs> they're good at acting, but not attractive. That's yeah. the answer. Yeah. Well, in fact, when I when I auditioned for st- when I when I briefly auditioned for agents, everyone was like, "Oh, you're like a character guy." I'm like, "Oh, that's insulting." <laughs> that's very oh, insulting. that's my dream, dude. That's my dream is to be a character guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, speaking of not attractive, that's certainly our subject today because dude, she looks. She looks rough. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's it's funny because like she definitely looks. She's always looked ex- like rough and like her. It looks like she has meth mouth. Like she always mm-hmm. looks, it looks like her teeth are missing. She has she's been in a lot of movies and TV shows that are like a, where like meth that are set in like meth country. Yes, yeah. Like, I, like she's in Justified, and uh, as like the big boss of like the, the the like the women's prison. Yeah, it's because she has. You guys are right. She has the that look of Midwestern Southern. But it's like... it's the whole package though it's it's like the haggard face the ha- the haggard skin her voice matches all of that her mannerisms like mm-hmm. it all comes right. together you know the, the alchemy the 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 meth lab cooked up something nice when it came to nice the... principles she was in season two she was like the uh danny mcbride's like assistant or something like guard that was working oh there. right 
she inexplicably it's so funny she inexplicably has this like undying loyalty to danny mcbride to, to the point where she's willing to like assault people and die for him she's very yeah, she's awesome in that she's in she's in so many movies and t- tv yeah she's in everything she's she's one of those people and who she didn't get her first role until 34 That's yeah crazy. well Especially back it, in it's funny she Hollywood. was in she's got a broadway background yes yeah she was oh. on stage a lot which i'd um, never expect you you would expect this to be just like you almost expect this to be like a safety brothers casting where it's like they just like found her you know she doesn't look no, like she's... somebody you would just find <laughs> she's not she's like <laughs> just nodding off on the street <laughs> you know, we were yeah. giving her like so many we were just calling her ugly in so many different ways <laughs> like, we're not even like well she was so talented but <laughs> I, she had look she has to know <laughs> she's got to know i mean you guys you wouldn't know, i think i would oh i would yeah well that was the that was the thing like watching that the, the movie i watched last night a love song her the, her role in that as like a leading woman first off she kills it she's amazing in that movie it, but also like she approaches it with like su- such an inner beauty that <laughs> i'm like yeah i i would i would uh you know tap tap that tap tap that yeah. ass larry um yeah she she was great in that like it's it's such a like a quiet pretty just like whimsical almost movie and it was it was interesting to see her in a leading role because like she carries the movie and she there's not and there's not a lot of dialogue in it so like the movie is carried by how just decrepit her and West Studi look in the movie, right? <laughs> um, right. But it, yeah, there's I, a movie I, that uh, I thought Sissy Spacek carried this one movie I saw. Carrie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. She really carried that movie. Yeah. Uh, um. But, oy, oy, oy. but yeah, she. Uh, you know, Dale Dickey from Knoxville. She's. Uh, I think she was. She like sixty two now. She's sixty two. She, yeah, she looks a thousand. Uh. <laughs> but she keeps it. But she keeps it one hundred. She keeps it one hundred. She does. <laughs> she keeps it a hundred. Um, How yeah, crazy I, would it be if like, like the face looks like this, but you see her body and it's like she's just completely pristine? You know what I oh, mean? Oh, dude, I bet, dude. <laughs> dude, that's what I was thinking. Like, I could see having a pretty good body. Like, I feel like you don't make it in Hollywood unless you're pretty fit as a woman. Yeah, unless you go like full Melissa McCarthy, Rebel. Yeah, Wilson. or you have like an accent, like look at like Rebel Wilson. You know, she sounded. Oh uh, yeah, you know, well, Rebel Wilson. She Rebel people... Wilson lost the weight. Yeah, she did. And look, ain't seen her in no movies lately. That's true. So, oh my god, yeah. Um, yeah, I watched uh, I watched Winter's Bone a couple nights ago, and nice. that that just that was a that was a fucking bummer. I had never seen it. Well, Rebel Wilson straight up bimbo fight herself. She did like, that's, that's the trend. Like. Yeah, you got bimbofication. Bimbofication, yeah. You have to bimbo fight like the Mexican baker b- bread company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dude um she looks like a totally different person oh my god yeah rebel wilson yeah yeah she got i guess she, she got, has now she looks like a southern like mom uh like beauty pageant mom <laughs> that's crazy damn dude um, hollywood's nuts hollywood is nuts uh uh speaking of nuts i got nothing um yeah if you if you guys speaking you guys, of nuts you want to give her a winter's bone yeah you know what i mean all right kind of back <laughs> have you guys seen that movie uh I not in a now. long time it's about it's jennifer lawrence in it it's about like meth labs right like yeah it's she so jennifer lawrence plays a like a teenager she's like 17 in the movie i think she was only like 20 when they came out so she right. is She's very young. She still has like b- before she got like the buccal fat removal. Phase. That was her right. breakout role. Yeah, she she has like a very like baby fattish like smooth face. Um, so she looks like a child, and right. um, mm-hmm. and, and it's like it's like her her dad has just gotten out of jail, and so the bail bondsman comes over and is like, "You your dad's out of jail, 
and he's on bond, but like part of the bond is he put up the house and James he, Bond. Yeah. And if he if he don't <laughs> it's like if he don't show up within the week, then you're gonna lose this house. So J- Jennifer Lawrence has to go on this like adventure to figure out like where her dad is. And she knows like in you know, he's she knows that he's he was a meth cook. So she goes like asking mm. all of her like family and extended family to try to figure out where this is going on, like what's going on. And they keep telling her like, you don't, you know, stop this, stop following this. This is only going to lead to trouble. And she, she eventually like makes her way to some like cousin or uncle, the the wife of which I is Dale Dickey. And so Dale Dickey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so Dale Dickey is like sort of like the mother figure, but also this like abusive hard ass who tells her like, you know, get on out of here. You, don't, you this is only going to cause problems. And uh, mm. yeah, so like, yeah, come come to find out, her her dad actually, <laughs> her dad was actually killed because he flipped, and he was like going to talk to the sheriff and like something like he he was he stood to do like a bunch of time and he didn't want to do it, so he was talking to the sheriff. So his like extended family killed him, and mm. so now now Jennifer Lawrence has to like find this body to prove that he's dead. So the the bondsman doesn't take her fucking house. Um, and so if, if it like, I don't know, it's just a, it's just a sad bummer of a movie about like poor people in Missouri, uh, trying to not be homeless. And it's, uh, man, cooking, cooking meth, like the meth, the meth cooking gangs, that like whole, like, what do you call it? The, the organized crime of meth is so kids. crazy to me. Cause it's, it's like it's a drug that like most people, even people who do drugs, if you offer them meth, they'd be like, no, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, and also like, isn't Adderall better? Like, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, Just yes. Some yeah, yeah, well, that's my point exactly. Like, if you're if you're living in like fucking Kentucky or Missouri, one of these states, and you're like you're cooking and dealing meth, it's like things are so dire there. Yeah, and it's, it's also it's, the, it, it, it's like, like you would. It's the same as crack, right? It's like the same kind of thing. Like, it's just <laughs> cheaper, probably. Yeah, I guess that's true. But then, but then it's funny then that like, I don't know. It's just it's always so funny to me when like people like get like, when you when people get like killed over this shit because it's like it's such a, it's not even a good a drug worth fucking dying for. No, it killed my cousin. It just really. Yeah, dude. He I think he was cook. He was like cooking it, and didn't take like the necessary. Let him cook. Yeah, let him cook. Uh, <laughs> pull, pull, pull up, let him cook. Uh, mm-hmm. Rest in power. So he, um, did he like die? Did like did the trailer blow up or something? Like, no, did he, die, like, he, he he didn't take like the necessary precautions. I don't think he really knew what he was doing, so he just ended up like poisoning himself. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it killed him. Um, um, I will say this: uh, uh, she is uh, not Dale Dickey, but Jennifer Lawrence is incredibly hot in uh, No Hard Feelings. Yeah, I saw the I saw the full frontal scene. I wish I she's could. She's hot the whole time, and she's funny. In it. I like that a lot. Yeah, I wish I could punch funny. her in her pussy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. By the way, Mia Goth is in trouble for uh, for kicking a background extra, and then, and then like yelling at him, yelling at him and like humiliating him after. And I was, I all I thought was like, what a lucky guy. <laughs> what a lucky guy. <laughs> I can't tell if that story is true because, like, at first I was like, okay, I can see that. But then, like, the detail where it's like she cornered him in the bathroom and was like, nobody will ever believe you and I can do whatever I – it's like, really? Wouldn't wouldn't he, like, wouldn't he just get fired from the set? Like, if Mia Goth – you know, like, that's so strange. Yeah, she would just say get rid of that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, did yeah. you see the other story where she punched a waiter at Nobu? Oh, oh so maybe she did that. do it. There's some other story that came out where she – allegedly punched her waitress at Nobu because they wouldn't make her bangers and mash. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> just, she, yeah, just, when I thought, just when I thought I couldn't be more attracted to this woman. If only, if only <laughs> there were some red flag that that woman without eyebrows would behave in an unsightly manner dude. yeah the woman yeah. married to shia LaBeouf. Yeah, if <laughs> only there was some sign yeah i mean i saw yeah i saw i, an, I, I, I watched pearl and i thought she was on the level pearl is one thing but i saw infinity pool and i was like oh there's a there's a lot of truth to this this is real well, what about uh, dude every time about i infinite, hear what about infinite real... pool have yeah. i what infinite temple 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Every, every time I hear her real voice, <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's nuts. Yeah. She sounds like a little, like, I don't even know what, what would you, what is that voice? It's like a little porcelain well, doll came to life. Yeah. Nick, you once said us about comedians, and I think we might have to ex- ex- uh, extend this to actors. Uh, never trust someone without eyebrows. Mm-hmm. That's so true, dude. It's uh, across the board. <laughs> I mean, unless they're sick, and even then, it's like. What about really that guy that sick person? That guy that plays. I don't uh, care. I still uh, love her. I hope she keeps working in Hollywood. What about that guy that plays Noho Hank on uh, Barry? Hi guys, I'm not. It's me, Noho Hank. Well, I I like Noho Hank, but every time I see like when I see interviews with that guy, I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't be friends with this guy. He's an act. He's a dyed in the wool actor. <laughs> I mean, I mean I, like that's a good rule of thumb is just don't associate with actors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's oh probably. Um, yeah, except, except for character nothing... actors, except for you know the, the well, real blue at... pill... character actors and actors who can write or actors who have an extensive background in like theater. Those are the three yes. good actors. Everyone yeah. else, every every single other actor is a husk of a person. Mm-hmm. Elon That's husk. So true. Elon, Elon husk. husk. Elon yeah. husk. Which honestly, Elon's a husk. Elon, Elon is a yeah. Quite frankly, Elon husk. <laughs> I saw his recent rogue, and I was watching some clips, and it was just funny how he was just like reciting talking points this time as if he was a politician. I liked yeah. his old interview. Where he's just like being autistic. Well, he's cl- he's clearly like, going insane. Yeah, he's. I think that's where I think broke his brain. He's hemorrhaging money, and like that, I don't know how that loan works. And I, 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 from what I understand, he put up a bunch of shares of Tesla or something to procure that loan from the bank. And so, like, if if the stocks and everything dip far enough, he stands to lose like a lot. Yeah, it, and he had it, a, and you you forget he had like a Teflon public image before the, all the Twitter stuff. He was an Iron Man too. The best Dude, one. I, people forget Obama era Musk was like the yeah. hero of all liberals. Yes, they were like they were like he makes all his shit open source. He's gonna save the world. Like everybody well, loved that was, guy. Tesla. Was, I mean, he did make like the one thing I'll give to him is he did like bring like Tesla was a big cool thing. You know, I like the environment, and he, it was the first electric car that was cool. It's fucking stupid. Uh, we should have nuclear cars. I agree. Uh, that Thank I agree you, Nick. With. Thank you. Speaking could you imagine nuclear... how awesome car crashes would be if we had nuclear cars? Speaking dude, that of, would be amazing. That, that would be cool. Speaking of, guess who? Guess who is cast in the new Fallout TV show? Uh, Walton who? Goggins and Tim Dillon, Dale Dickey. Dale Dickey. Well, they, I think her is, she Walt, Walt, is she playing a ghoul? Is she playing one of the ghouls? No, she's playing the guy. <laughs> she's playing the main guy in, the, in all the ads. Um, yeah, she's gonna be Fallout the Fallout 4 was fun. What, wait, no, wait, Fallout, what's that named after? What her teeth did? Hey, <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> nice dude. We're being so mean to her. She spoke yeah, at my cousin's. Right. I, I, I feel, I feel I thought terrible, this was like... a celebration, and the whole our whole discussion, I believe, soon. I feel like our whole discussion is like, how ugly is this? Bitch? <laughs> but... I, I, I do feel really bad because it's one of these things where it's like if I was ever in a situation where like like uh, like my career did take off and I found myself at a swanky Hollywood with Dale Dickey, I would I would want to greet her like without any guilt. But I'm too but, late like, for that, brother. I know. I mean, I feel really bad because I do like I do like I have nothing but admiration for her when I see her. You know? Oh, she she's a master. She's a ama- dude. That that scene at the beginning of Hell or High Water, she only she's only in that movie like a few minutes. Yeah, but she has one of my favorite lines where where she they're holding her at gunpoint, and she, and she says something like, "Go ahead." She's like, "Leave now." Only thing you're guilty of right now is being stupid. I just, I yeah. thought that was such a fun line. Like she she's so good in those like where she she'll just show up and stuff for like a few minutes, and, and just mm-hmm. knock it out of the park. I mean, she's probably mm-hmm. only in. She got like all these accolades for Winter's Bone. She's maybe in that movie ten minutes. That's, I love those. That seems those to be her thing. Yeah, she's barely in the movie, but when she is, she completely overshadows Jennifer Lawrence. Like there, dude. There's yeah, this kinda, scene. It uh, seems like ahead. she's doing the. Um, oh my god, she was in Bloodline. I think I remember in that. Uh, she seems like she might do the uh, the latter day Bruce Willis thing because she's in so many movies where she just shows up in a bunch of movies for like a scene. Yeah, or that's like what they do. That's, that's what the guys well, they, do. I mean, I think the other thing is she can't be in the movie too long because the cameras start breaking. 
<laughs> they have to be cameo roles. Yeah, they're renting uh, all those. The lens they're renting just... the reds. You're gonna lose the deposit on that. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, she. Um, well, she... apparently, like, there's just a there's a big uh, chance someone will like pour water on her and she'll melt. She'll melt. <laughs> <laughs> they're worried that a PA is gonna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like oh, their God, I, I, the craft table. <laughs> I thought she was good in that Dungeons and Dragons movie when they have to dig up those graves and talk to the <laughs> queen. <laughs> I was so excited to send this to girls that I want to have sex with. Be like, hey, no, we talked about a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, by the way, you're you're also a redhead. Obviously, clock's taken. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Get the hint. Huh? Get the hang. <laughs> she spoke. She spoke at my cousin's uh, commencement. She's from uh, Knoxville, and my cousin went to UT University, University of Tennessee. In Is the, the same school. meth guy? No, it's a dude. It's oh. the, the cousin who does uh, who got rich on OnlyFans. Um, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I mix uh, up your insane family lore. Yeah, this is a female cousin. This is a female cousin. Yeah. Hot cousin? Yeah. Well, obviously hot. Yeah, cousin. yeah. Go check out her own. I'll, t- I'll tell you her name after this. You can go look it can up. You, yeah, can you dude, my, dude, my cousin, my cousin literally is uh is like a was a fairly notable porn star in the two thousands, and I only oh, like yeah. found out a couple years ago. Damn, dude, your cousin is J Mac. Uh, no, <laughs> no, my cousin is fucking my cousin. My cousin is fucking Eve Lawrence. I don't know who that is. I'll look it up though. Yeah. Might be a little before your time um my yeah i guess like it, it, the those days it was like belladonna dana diamond jenna yeah. jameson i don't know girls my cousin vinny but he just <laughs> wait help me out with these guys okay <laughs> hey what the fuck you're an only fan what the hell <laughs> uh. yeah my my cousin graduated from ut uh years ago and uh p- apparently at her graduation her commencement the speaker was dale dickey dale dale dickey's also from knoxville and an alum nigh of university of tennessee knoxville by the way very beautiful town great college town yeah well, i thought except for university of titties and, and i spe- thought this was the only fans cousin and by the way speaking of fallout nu- nuclear the, the remember in Oppenheimer when they're talking about the um where they're gonna have these like sites that they're working on this shit and he mentions Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um Knoxville, there's like there's like a town like right outside of Knoxville called Oak Ridge. That's that's what he was talking about. I've been to that town. They have like a whole facility where you can go and like uh it's like a museum now, but it's where they were working on like the Manhattan project in Tennessee. Um I don't know. It's really cool, yeah. They take you through like all the history of it, what they were doing, like all the women in that region, and like all these broke people were getting these jobs there, and they were just told like, "Hey, don't tell anybody what you do for a living." Wow, because <laughs> it was to build uh, the bomb. Yeah, yeah, I, I was reading about that kind of. Uh, by the way, I gotta, I gotta run, guys. Okay, I, have, I can, uh, I can hang on for a little longer. Family. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Rob. thank you guys. Everyone, listen to What About Rob podcast, or I could I could maybe put this on my feed too. Yeah, we could do we but, could do a uh, swap. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um. What about What about Rob? patreoncom slash What about Rob? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks again, Dom. Let's do this. Uh, let's do one of these again soon. That'd be fun. yes. Yeah. Hi, I just Robbie. have oh, a hey, family obligation. Thank you, yeah, Robbie. Awesome. Oh yeah. What a homo! All right, now, all right, now let's get down to brass tacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now we're cooking. Um, yeah. Did you did you watch anything in preparation for this? I, I did not. I've just seen. I, I'm just going off like memory of <clears throat> stuff that I've seen of hers. Yeah. Um, I should have. I, I, but you know what, Dalton? I'll be honest. I had a feeling that, like, like you know, what's funny. She is good in Heller High Water. I don't like Heller High Water, but I did watch her in True Blood. In the season that she's in True Blood. I remember her in that. I don't remember that show that well because I thought it was really stupid. Uh, it is really stupid. Yeah. It's it's like by the time they get to like wear Panthers, I'm like, I'm out. This is really fucking dumb. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of like, it's crazy. She's one of those. I forgot. I guess she's in Palm Springs. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I, I was looking at her filmography and there's so much stuff where I'm like. Oh yeah, I guess she was in that. But <laughs> yeah, but but she's just like a woman in the. It's crazy how many of her roles are still like woman in bar. Yeah, like, even recently. 
I watched that that Pirates of the Caribbean thing I sent you. That yeah, like, that short, was good. She uh, does she have any? She doesn't have any lines in that. No, I don't think. Or if she does, <laughs> she has like one or two. She's in it for no reason. She just like is a, is like a winch with an eye patch, and she just goes. Ah! <laughs> and <that's her> <laughs> <role>. <laughs> But this is what I love about character actors. Um, there was a great Michael Madsen quote where like people, some interviewer was like asking him about like project selection. And he's like, look, man, I just, I'm an actor. And the goal as an actor is to, is to work. Yeah. You know? But like, it's also, it's Michael Madsen. So it's like whatever director is willing to deal with this, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, but oh, I mean, she's, I... In, um, she's in dinner with Brett Gelman. As herself. Uh oh. I do remember that. I never watched it. I didn't like it's, that he was married to a black woman at the time. Uh, uh, I well, didn't. He's rectified that and married a, a <laughs> he, Zionist Jew. Yeah, he's corrected his ways. He's fixed. Dude, yeah, he's he's off the rails now. Oh, she's in Frasier? Who, who's she? Frasier? Um, Niles. I'll look this up. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, she she's like she's in so it, like you know it's like the last episode dude, where it's it's like looking at these filmographies. I'm like, God damn, dude, it's such an extensive history. I think with her though, compared to the the, the last guy we covered, M. Emmett Walsh, she's yeah. done more television than movies. It seems like. Yes, she has. Yeah, although I, I don't know, she's done she's done a lot of movies. She's done a lot. Of I'm movies. not as many as Emmett Walsh. Yeah, because I I remember like why she's memorable for me. I remember when I first like clocked her, uh, was when she she had this recurring role on My Name Is Earl. Remember that? Yes, yes. As Patty, the daytime hooker. Yes. yes. Yeah. And and I was I was watching this one episode earlier where she she's at on trial for uh, soliciting sex, and it's such a funny role because you know she's like. Um, I ain't asked for m money for sex. It was uh cheeseburgers. <laughs> Jeez, they had, people were paying for cheese <laughs> cheeseburgers for sex, fries for a handy, pickle for a looky. And then they do a recess, and she comes running out later, and she's like, "I'm not going to jail for a cheeseburger handy." <laughs> it's yeah, she's so funny in that role. That was that was where I first like became aware of her. Was watching that as a kid, and that show holds up, by the way. It's very good. I I need to watch that show again. That was my first exposure to Jason Earl as well. I didn't realize he and honestly, like you mean Jason Lee, be, Jason Lee, not Jason Earl, <laughs> so stupid. Uh, Jason Lee, and that might be his like only good performance. That show. Um, maybe. I mean, there's that. There's uh, Dave Seville in um, Alvin, the, the, Alvin the, 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 the Squeak Wool Chipwreck. Of course. Um, I thought I enjoyed him in Mallrats as a kid and Dogma. Yeah, like, look, he's good in Mallrats, but is it like it's not a great, it's not great acting. You know, what I mean, like, he really like I, him in Mallrats, and honestly, him in like Vanilla Sky. It's like it almost sounds like he's reading cue cards to me. Yeah, well, he's, he's a, like he's a fucking a skateboarder. Skateboarder, yeah, he's yeah. But, but in my name is Earl. He's good. He's actually like really good. He's good in that, and I don't know where he's from, but yeah, that the the like white trash Southern thing fits him for that show. He's very good. He's at from that. Santa Ana, California. <laughs> so no, it's a Jeff Bridges situation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, there's a, there's a ton of like there's a ton of actors who just like they get. I love actors who fall in love with putting on a fake southern accent jeff bridges is and jeff bridges didn't used to have one no until like recently he did he did true grit and he was like i'll just do this forever yes uh same like leo clearly loves speaking a southern accent shia labeouf can't lose his southern accent yeah it's so weird because like people from the south who move to hollywood spend like thousands of dollars to lose that accent Mm -hmm. And then people from Hollywood will do a movie where they have to do one. And then they're just like, I was, I'm, I'm from uh, Mississippi now <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's sick. I did that. I did not to, obviously not because I was never successful in Hollywood, but I used to have like a, I would do comedy in DC and I, I dated this older woman who was like crazy. And she was like, she was like, if you want to be successful, you need to lose your Maryland accent. And I, tr and I used to speak way more like I was from Maryland. And I like made a, 
I like mentally beat myself up. Like you can't fuck dog like this. I wish I hadn't done it. It's a cool accent. I know. Yeah. I mean, look at Sh Shane sounds like Philly trash. He man. does. It's, <laughs> it, why would you want to get rid of the thing that like makes you? Yeah. Distinct, I you mean, know? that's what we're, you know, we're talking about today. Like she, Dale Dickey sounds like she's from Tennessee. Could you imagine if tomorrow Dale Dickey, like if like if Dale Dickey heard this podcast and she got extensive plastic surgery? And <laughs> out of face, she looks like Donatella Versace. And... <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? She'd probably become an A-list star, actually. Yeah, I mean, it could still happen. You know, stranger things have happened. Uh, people people bloom late in life sometimes. Yeah, um, that's what I'm banking on. That's, I used to, man. Sometimes. How do you think you're going to age? Because you got a baby face on you. I don't know, man, because like uh, I, 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 I hit it hard for a while and then obviously everything happened that happened. And so who who knows what damage has been done, you know, in, in the in the interim between like the brain accident and now and the just what, what's happened to me. You know, it could I could have like really, you know, pushed the accelerator on this one. You could have. But I mean, but I, yeah, but you don't. it doesn't seem like. I mean, also, I guess you got a beard and everything right now. You don't, you don't look as like road worn as I would expect, right? But I don't know. The I, people, I never... the the people in my family definitely live hard. Like they treat their bodies like dog shit. But no one ages. Like on my dad's side, my dad is is sixty, and he looks like he's maybe in his forties, right? And but if, but if you if you look inside, and the organs are like black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but they still live forever. They're fucking miserable. But it, all of them live forever. Well, it sounds like maybe they're. You're describing a healthy person. <laughs> yeah, I'm just de I'm describing someone who, like, against all odds, is still like somehow healthy and looks youthful, but is absolutely fucking miserable. Mm -hmm. Um, who just like in defiance of nature is continuing to live, and then just you know eventually is like ninety in a nursing home with dementia. While her, you know, daughters steal her pain medication. <laughs> Me, you know. You know. Yeah, um, I guess that does. I guess that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds like a real uh, winter's bone type of situation. It does. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, the, like watching that movie. I it, that was the thing. But I was like, I'm too close to this. This is too yeah. similar to. It, it's more extreme. But I was like, <clears throat> I, yeah, I can identify with a lot of this um so was, wild to me. yeah yeah dude like uh it's not even dude it's 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 weird. like watching that movie is, was such a trip for me because it's like poor white poor white southerners are that way because they're just like stuck in that they're stuck in that mindset they're stuck in being that you know what i mean like yeah it, it, it's just it's such a fucking mindset thing it's like all these people who are just like trapped by their own just i don't know just like who they are no I, it's funny i had a so I, some it's not exactly it's not the south actually but it might as well be um so my grandmother got divorced remarried this guy who basically was my grandfather bob and he was from like the mountains of pennsylvania and it like you know which was like you know like steel mill coal mining that was what they did and but they were like the people you're describing where it's like they, you know, they never left. There were like fucking, you know, what, a few hundred people in the town. They thought the government were like, these are people who don't have computers who think the government is like surveilling them. They were <laughs> the, the, His one cousin. And this was in like 2017. So and my grandfather at that point was like in his 70s and his cousins in his 70s. And when they showed up to the house, he was like, come around back. I want to show you something. He, he had built a cannon. He had like he had built a <laughs> hell yeah that he, yeah that he was going to use in case like the government tried to take his his shitty barren land and it's just like that it's like that I, that mentality never goes away they are stuck in it. why the fuck are you built dude if he tries to shoot that if he ever tried to shoot that thing but that but but, all, but the thing that's like asinine about that is like you have like this kind of like engineering ability and this is what you're using it for <laughs> no you know what I mean yes. like. That was the thing, like well, any any movie like that that I was like Winter's Bone or any movie about like those kinds of people uh, watching it. It's like so you possess the business acumen to operate like a meth operation, and that but you're choosing to do that. <laughs> that's, that's what the, I mean. 
yeah like you you clearly have skills that could be used to do something else that would make you like f way more money and be far like far more successful and legal but you're choosing to do this grimy poor people shit because i think the first part of the problem is that most people despite whatever like skills you possess most people actually don't want to leave the town that they grew up in sure so if you if you refuse to do that that's and you live in fucking one of those areas it's like yeah what are you it's not like there's like it's not like there's legitimate opportunities in those places i mean there are now like with the way the internet is now because like true that's true you can yeah like i do you know i'm in parts unknown these days but like everything i do is online so i have like i i'm building an empire uh <laughs> yeah don't don't ever say that this network does not make money again Nick. I'm sorry. I didn't mean if you if you want to be guys. part of this network, don't ever <laughs> don't ever disrespect the network. This is the meth boss talking to that you would be doing if were if you didn't have a laptop, right? You would be you'd be giving this this it, uh, lashing. If I didn't underwear. steal this Chromebook and if the days <laughs> in set their Wi-Fi to private, then <laughs> we would not be having this conversation. Uh, you, I bet you would actually run a pretty ship shaped meth lab though. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you what, I learned what I needed to learn in middle school to know that you got to take the proper safety precautions. They taught yes. us that in, the, in that room with all them black tables. <laughs> you got to put on your goggles. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, dude, that's, yeah, those tables, the tables that had, I remember it was outlets and they also had, uh, did, was there another, there was like something else about those tables. That, I can't remember they were great to draw there. on with a pencil. They were good for yes. Oh, they had all been totally defaced. Yeah, I mean, like every slur, big dicks, small dicks. Yeah, they were fun for for doing pencil dicks, pencil di drawings of dicks with a pencil. But they would be big. Did you dicks. ever see somebody have to use the um the thing to rinse their eyes out after they got chemicals in their eyes? No, I that never. Ha I wanted it to happen so bad. Yeah. I just wanted to see somebody have to turn that on. It is like it is almost like Chekhov's gun. When you walk into the classroom for the first time and you see that thing, you're like, I better see that get used in my yeah. lifetime, dude. I need to see that. Yeah, it's funny, you know. You, I, it's it's a good idea to have a well rounded education. Uh, I I remember nothing from any of those classes, and none of the none of what I was taught has carried over into my life at all. The only thing I remember from my public school education career is how many. Um, of my teachers wound up being like pedophiles that went to jail. It was like four. <laughs> yeah. And, and one, one of them, one of them like was like one of the science teachers. I, so we had, it was our, we had a theater teacher uh, who got caught with child pornography. Um, I had a, an English teacher in fourth grade who got fired for having the kids like sleep on his lap. Was it like Tyler and, Perry, like Medea productions? Right. Like, <laughs> like stage <laughs> productions of child pornography. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a giant. Yeah, like the Andrew the Lloyd. Tyler? Yeah, like what? the cat's tape that they used to try and sell on the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then we we had a um actually sorry, the this guy didn't get fired, but in retrospect it was like he had to be it too. It was my science teacher in 7th grade. And he ever he was just like real friendly with all the girls. And he would like ask them what they wore to bed. I remember, dude. It's so crazy how brazen some of these people are. Dude, I mean, that's why you know, the, 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 there's all these conversations uh, that have been had for many, many years now about like teachers don't get paid enough. And I've said publicly they should get paid less, considering how many of them are just fucking criminals. The, yeah, man. It's like it's. I had two teachers in my high school get fired for stealing money. Yeah, and, like, how, and, like how like and how many more? And how many more for the, like m across the board? Like most teachers have zero interest in even doing that job. It, they they took it out of like survival, where it's just like, well, yeah. I have an English degree, I can make you know fifty thousand dollars a year and get summers off. So okay, you know, like they yeah, but they, it, they they don't have a passion for like they don't they're not actually trying to educate. It's it's a fucking. Yeah, uh, with rare exception but it is like it's crazy i remember my first crazy realization when i got out of high school was like oh my god some of my teachers when i was like 16 were like 23 oh yeah that's, that's like nothing that's nuts. And, but the, but the crazy thing is their co-workers some of their co-workers were like 55 
Yeah. And it's like they're doing the same job. Yeah, I dude, I get chills whenever I'm like working a job, like whatever I'm doing for work. And the the people that I work with, like when you talk to someone who's been for with the company for like 25 years, I'm like this, you've been doing you stuck with this this long? Yeah. I would have killed myself by now. I'd have been wad my whole fucking family. <laughs> you would have put Ben Wah balls in all of them, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> shove jingle balls up my family's ass. <laughs> Imagine that's the crime scene. <laughs> that, that, would have, that, that would have been funny if that's how he did it. If he <laughs> been ball his whole family. Instead of a bow flex, it's just like Chinese uh, jingle <laughs> balls. <laughs> um, oh my god. It would that would that, that would definitely be a reason for the WWE to just never speak of it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be justified. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, and like it's a crazy. Public schools are crazy. Then my mom's a public school teacher, and I'm like, I see both both sides of it. But it's like I don't know. Yeah, man. I'm sure there's good teachers out there, but I think we we should just eliminate fucking uh, education in this country. Just go to YouTube. That's what AI George Carlin said. I know. <laughs> I saw that you love that. I and, and, and we'll we'll get back to the show here in a minute. Uh, I'm sure we will. Who cares? We don't have to stay on topic the whole time. Well, we 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 insulted her enough. Um, but uh, I so I watched it and I found it fascinating because mm-hmm. it's not being presented as George Carlin. It's it's an AI doing an impression of George Carlin. That is also Mm -hmm. presenting as though it's aware of its own existence as an AI. Mm -hmm. And so it gets into this like weird existential territory about what it even means to be conscious, to possess consciousness and to be a a, a sentient being in some ways. It was really weird. It was. Yeah. But this is not selling me on it. (laughs) it, Yeah, it was. It was. there there it was there was something unsettling about it for sure but it was also Mm -hmm. like as just like a new thing especially like if you enjoy sci-fi if you've like watched a lot or read a lot of sci-fi it's definitely like what people have been writing about for years it's like oh this is crazy this is like no i know that's but and that's why i'm so amazed that like we invented ai (laughs) like yeah i just can't believe we did it it's the it's the only invention where there's like been a hundreds of years of literature about how you should not invent it you know yeah it was yeah it was really odd because it's, first i mean it's it's easily to for me from what i've seen it's the most impressive thing that ai has done it was like i was like watching it going this is weirdly creative and good for what ai has been and is now uh um, yeah no i mean I, I think that like the the cope for a long time everybody's cope with ai is like oh look it can't even oh ai is making movies well look they suck ai is writing jokes look they're not funny and i'm like give it three months i think i think every time i think what i really like about it like what what, what, you know really tickles me is that somehow will sasso is one of the architects of the destruction of the human race (laughs) in doing this (laughs) I, I know well but you know what man like based on like because i've been following his like post that doesn't surprise me at all because like prior to this he was like he was just like he's oh they'll do prior like, too i'm sure they'll do prior as well <laughs> AI. is the ai allowed to say it that is a, that's actually a, an ethical conundrum is the can the ai say it having not had <laughs> can the ai say it can the ai really say it <laughs> Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's the real uh, Star Trek episode of this. Is is can the AI say the N word? That will be the one thing that AI like. That'll be the the N word will be the last remaining shred of our humanity because the AI is not allowed to say slurs. Like if you use like ChatGPT, so that'll be the one thing that Data. we will have to cling to. Data, you cannot say that word. But Captain, I used a <laughs> soft A. I was told it was okay. I don't use so, the hard R. But Will Sasso's feed is all like before this, he was like doing like crypto scams and stuff. Like it's Will like, Sasso? So like I'm not what? Will Sasso? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His if you look at his Twitter feed, it's all him like reach like buy shit coin, buy all this whatever the fucking coin is. You know, the the so, bread the breadcrumbs are there. Like he's he's been in the uh 
like w- weirdly enough has the it does have a connection to sci-fi and all these like speculative ideas because he was sure, in he's in he's in Southland Tales. He's in Southland Tales, he was in Sliders. Remember right. Sliders? He yeah. was in a Doctor Who special in the nineties. Oh yeah. It's like he you know, he was leaving clues. And we should have known. Yeah, he, yeah, it's it's it is strange that he him and that I don't know who that other guy is, but because I've I've seen clips of that show before, and I just always like would see that AI shit, and I'd be like, well, this looks like it sucks. Uh, but then it's I don't know. It's it's the AI thing, man. I mean, I, try, I try every every couple of weeks. I try to be like, ah, Nick, you got to calm down about AI. But then I'm just like, no, I do because I literally think like eventually the most because I think what's going to happen is like. The people up and coming in comedy, and this is just how it relate, how it pertains to like what we want to do, are already such sharks. Like we've seen like a level, like comedians are sharks on a level never before seen. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Dude, now I'm I'm like outside of it now, and it's like I've done worse for sure than probably most comedians have done. But I'm kind of outside <laughs> of it now, and just like watching it from the outside. I'm like, man, the I can't believe this is something I was like really trying to get into. You know, yeah, but but what I'm saying is it's just gonna become like everything like it'll you'll just have people using AI to generate hours of comedy. And I don't think that like I think that there will I think you're gonna see like a small faction of like intelligent people who can discern good art, like the way there's like a small faction of people who like want to watch real movies. Yeah, but I think most people are probably will probably be fine with AI comedy. Probably and will I, probably I, be like, Yeah, no, it's yeah. But there's you're, already you're just using it to write your set. There's already so much stuff that exists now that is being done by humans that might as well be AI. Like it's baffling to me what yes. what's like like the, the, that. I, I'm fascinated by uh, Twitch streamers now, and like I've watched stuff from that guy Kai Sanat, and it to me I'm like this looks like it, an AI. This is like an AI yes. program created like a black guy to play Grand Theft Auto and scream into it. it's it's such a bizarre and you know he's a billionaire because of it but it's so fucking strange to me that that's what people are doing yeah like 14 well, hours just, streams just, and 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 we'll, we'll get back to the show in a minute but uh it just seems like this is like another like this is <laughs> if man if i get really like because uh, i can get really on like like a schizo conspiracy tip with this and i'm just like this is just like another part of like the mass like like there, there. Whether it's planned or not, like there are so many elements of like dehumanization hitting us from like so many different areas that I'm like this AI thing. Like I don't know. We don't. It, the things that we consume have been completely dehumanized. Eventually, the way that we like interact with people will be completely dehumanized. When I was home for Christmas, and my uncle is uh, he's a tech guy. He's very into AI. And we had another guy at our Christmas party. It was like yeah actually ai is like really useful because like you know i use it to write my emails at work like i realized that like i wasn't my emails were being worded a little strongly so i use ai to write my emails now so that they won't seem as like aggressive and i'm like i'm like so you'll so you will just never learn so what you're saying is you're like i'll never put it on myself to figure out how to like socially interact with people i will let ai do it for me yes and and they and i'm just like i don't don't you see how like that's like the that will snowball into something very unsettling. Yeah. I mean, I also think of it like if, if you and I, at least I can speak for myself. If I was a teenager now, I'd be using AI to do all of my school. But they do. They do. Yeah. And, and, and it's like on some level, I'm like, okay, yeah, school sucks. But, but also like, I don't know. I'm like using AI taking it. It just makes like, I don't know, man, I don't want to trivialize humanity. Cause then I think, I think that then when that happens, that's when, the non-human intelligences will reveal themselves to us and the UAPs will, will break through the, uh, the <laughs> well, magnetic I, field. <laughs> the thing, the, the, Car- the Carlin thing tripped me out because like, it's obvious that the way this stuff is, you know, it hasn't achieved like actual sentience yet. That's, you know, that's James Cameron shit. But it, it, it is like drawing from humanity and like all these things that humans have done and created. So it's like, it's like, I don't, I don't know. It's 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 like this god and like, creator and creation situation where like it's made in our image and it's drawing from like our human experience and the things it's creating 
right now are like obvious noticeable like simulacra of what we do but there is there is like still some like seed of what we are in it if that makes any sense like yeah but (laughs) for now yeah i mean for now it like it's in the last year it's progressed to a shocking degree for me i would say i mean i mean yeah technology's always been that way but yeah it's definitely like that that was the thing like watching that special i was like you know all these people are saying like he would never write jokes like this this doesn't even sound like him and i was watching it and going man this is fucking close it's close it's definitely close that was that was what alarmed me about it i was like this is like the tone is is pretty on point yeah, for, like for, for most of it, the the voice is you know it's it's obvious it's not him in the voice, but it sounds like him. Like it sounds like an impression, and the, like the cadence in the writing and like the philosophy of it. I'm like, if he was alive, these are the bit. This is like sounds like a bit he would do about OnlyFans or like whatever, yes. like whatever exists now, you know. And yeah, it was it was really uncanny. It was it was like. It, you know obviously ai but it's still in that uncanny valley territory but it's like man they're getting fucking close with this shit no i think like literally by next year it'll be we'll have, we'll have bridge the gap i mean i think that the, the, i i do think the thing that you're going to start seeing people use this for is like i mean it seems inevitable people are going to use this to like talk to dead loved ones if as long as you have the like the cachet of like information and videos to train it on that will become like a huge i promise you they're going to do that and yeah that's, i do that terrifying. is where, like, could you could you imagine being Kelly Carlin and like, watching that? <laughs> I know, man. That does seem mean. <laughs> it seems like a mean prank on her. Oh uh, yeah, but I don't know, man. There was a part. There was a part of me that did enjoy it, where I was just as like, <laughs> I'm I'm being honest, like as as no, somebody as somebody who digs like new shit and sci fi and speculative ideas, I was watching it from like a place of curiosity, like holy shit, this is fucking... I can't believe Will Sasso uh, from Mad TV <laughs> did this. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, there was also the part of me that was horrified by it. Like, oh, this is really scary. Yeah. Would you, Would you? given the option, would you assimilate with the Borg, dude? Would, would you uh, be fascinated by the, uh, by the possibilities of entering a cybernetic hive mind? Yeah, it was part of me, yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would just it would be such a load off to be honest it would it might yeah. it might be kind of hot too you know yeah it would just be like the, the the stressors of having to like take care of myself and make my own decisions and like navigate my own life to for that to go away would be nice that would be yeah you're no you're right you're right you're right <laughs> i don't know man i'm so i'm i'm so afraid i'm i'm like i'm getting like so like i'm getting so weird <laughs> like, I, like, be careful man i've been so. there i've been in that mindset it, it, it can well, end it can end bad you know i'm not i mean i'm I'm off like psychedelics and stuff although the, some of this is definitely informed by like psychedelics but um i'm getting so weird man i'm getting so fearful that like m- more than anything i'm getting afraid that like death is not the end and and that when we die we'll just be like it's not like it won't be like a release or like this like loving like place that you go it'll be more like you're just like an antelope on the plains and they're a bigger scarier things that are going to feed off you well that's, except hey, except you can't die and you never go to sleep that's the that's the final chunk in the ai carlin special is talking about what it's like to be uh dead Wait, Car- really? yes there dude there's a whole the, the, there's like all these moments in it where it's ai carlin <laughs> talking about being dead and existing as an ai and how that's sort of like the afterlife and he has the, it's this whole chunk about like aging and, and uh decaying and all that in life and the final line of the special is, so you know, folks, living is dying, and dying is living. Thank you. Good night. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Yeah, dude. Man, this is this is this is how I know I'm losing my mind. I started like, God, that's fucking me up. I started following this guy on Twitter. Let's see if I can find him. Um, and what he does is, is it, is it black or Chinese? It's a black or Chinese. Guy. No, that, no, that guy, it's, it's, it's a work of art similar okay. to, to that guy. I follow this guy, DJ Kemp, uh, I'm sorry, DJ K at Derry, uh, Daryl John Kemp. And what he does is he takes high definition videos of 
what appears to be like pieces of ash from fires but he claims that they're shape-shifting elementals and he'll then like he'll re he'll use a uh, editing program to repeat like the images over a static background so you can see how the elementals these like uh, extraterrestrials are shape-shifting before our eyes and he's clearly he's like a schizophrenic crazy person who's accidentally making really cool album art but today <laughs> i was looking at his feed and i <laughs> started to feel like i started to feel like god damn i think he might be on to something i'm like that does look like that does look like a vessel releasing beer. <laughs> yeah, that, I had a similar I had a similar experience when I was schizophrenic where there were people who were like buying into some of the crazy shit I was doing. <laughs> they were like, mm -hmm. some of this checks out. <laughs> I dude, I'm looking at this like because it is like it is amazing art. Right, I'll send some to you. And it's it, it's and that's why I think it's like kind of like fantastic, like outsider art. But uh I literally, like, I had to stop myself today, you know, because I started to genuinely consider that he might be right. <laughs> but of course he's not. There's no way. No. I will not lose my mind, Dalton. I can't. No. I have a cat. I have a girlfriend. I have fucking rent to pay. I cannot lose my mind. Yeah, I, I understand that. I've been, look, I've, I've been through the worst of it. And trust me, you don't want to, you don't want to be getting them calls about unpaid bills. <laughs> um, You don't want those phone calls. No, definitely not. Um. Yeah, you get so used to just ignoring your phone, you miss your uh, when your actual friends and loved ones call you. Yeah, how was that, man? I've always meant to ask you because I've like been like, uh, well, you've probably gone into it, but uh, I, you know, I've been like, obviously, I've been like, I've hallucinated and stuff and been out of my mind on Sykes, but is it like it was devastating? It? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I mean, when you're in it, it feels awesome. Um, right, it's like you're not sleeping. You feel like you're right about everything. Yeah, I mean, you f you feel like uh, uh, Dale Dickey on meth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me sometimes. I'll write like when I used to do mushrooms, I would like write material on mushrooms, and I'd be like, I feel like I feel like I got it. I'm like, this is a special. No, oh, I like, I got to take this to the mic, dude. I genuinely, yeah, I thought I was a fucking genius. I was like, I mm -hmm. am connected to the universe, and I'm like gonna do my best work now um i i wrote this long chunk when i was on mushrooms that i was like man when people hear this it's gonna like they're gonna be calling me to like at begging me you know to let me to let them represent me that's that's a big part of it like the delusions of it is is like <laughs> so you're gonna through all of your like crazy delusions and conspiracies and the shit you're coming up with that somebody will notice this and yes. it, it will launch you into the stratosphere well i wrote this i wrote a i wrote this five minute bit about the how about the jewish weather machine <laughs> that's a that's a big part of it of too the, yeah, yeah. The, the point of the, the bit was that like the the big punchline is that i actually think there is a jewish weather machine yeah that dude that's <laughs> so funny because that's similar to one of the like wackadoo delusions i was having this, the, and this, this was before we got the shitty hulu history of the world part two there was no m hide right. nor hair mention of history of the world part two coming out at this time and, and this was like obviously this was during the pandemic and everything was so fucking crazy at the time that what i had truly led myself to believe was that in, with his infinite wealth and resources mel brooks had established like a Truman Show style production studio in space and history of the <laughs> history of the world part two was happening currently and he was directing earth like he was directing the events that were happening on earth as as a rich Jewish man in space he don't he wouldn't even be able to make the trip up <laughs> yeah it's it's an insane a lot of my conspiracies were tied up in like in uh, entertainment industry and the jews uh <laughs> yeah it, they, they were all like entertainment based entertainment industry based conspiracies uh <laughs> it was in that way so it was like rather than like a jewish weather machine it was just like a, a jew like a jewish production studio like like a lot in space yeah. that was manipulating the events on earth and creating what would become history of the world part two. And his, his final movie would be like some 
some version of, of what he had directed. Like he would edit it down and be like, folks, surprise. <laughs> this is what I've been working on. It's just looking like he's looking at data from Google Earth and he's like, okay, so obviously we can't use all of this. Right. <laughs> we got to get this down to six episodes. And, it, and it's like, that's so funny. Millions dead from COVID and all this crazy shit. The, the boat that got stuck in the canal. Like everything, I was like, "Oh, he's he's doing this," and it's a funny, <laughs> it's a funny bit. <laughs> that's that's way crazier than the bit that I wrote, but that is that is good, man. That's good yeah, one. yeah. There, was, I mean, there was a lot of like creativity to to what I was doing, and to, until I was like, you know, running up and down the streets and just like ringing people's doorbells and knocking on their doors to like <laughs> tell, tell them about the conspiracies. <laughs> Like I warned people about what was coming. <laughs> um, but yeah, to, to answer your question, yeah, all that shit felt awesome. And then like as it was really deteriorating, like as things were getting bad and uh I'm I'm getting hospitalized and all this shit's happening, right. like afterward, like when I finally when I came out of it and realized like, oh, everyone that has been trying to tell me how bad this is, how sick I am has been right. That was when um that was that was the darkness beginning. Right, because, for sure. Yeah, because you don't you don't just like come back. It's it's like I came back and like tried to be in the world. Like I I remember like doing stand up and trying to be around people, but I was just in this like, you know, I've described it as like Dougie Jones, like yeah, Twin Peak season three. Like that that was who I was. And then event I just realized like I'm gonna fucking die if I don't like figure some way out of this situation. And so, yeah, it was, it was very devastating, devastating everything that happened. And then like, as it was getting worse, as that, like the darkness was creeping in more and more. Um, and I found out later that th this is like something that happens after like a prolonged, uh, episode like that, like psychosis is you then have something called abolition, uh, not abolition, not freeing the slaves, but abolition, right. Which is just an inability to function. It's like a waking coma where it's like, really, just yeah, talking, reading, brushing your teeth, like all the basic shit that you know you just do normally, routine, is all as difficult as like running a marathon. It's it, it was just it was fucking wow, all, uh, dude. I there there was like one point when I legitimately thought I was dead. Like I I thought like oh I actually died at some point and this is hell. And it, like everything I'm experiencing is just like this fucked up afterlife. And at some point the world around me is going to dissolve into like the Abrahamic version of hell. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> in a lake of fire. The demons will reveal themselves oh after they tormented me enough with like visions of my friends, family, loved ones, and all of this that's happening right now. It, dude, it was really, it sucked. <laughs> and then, and then, like, yeah. And then, like, a, a few months ago, my buddy called me and was like, "Hey, man, you're gonna die uh, if you don't do something." You know, like, you, you, you. He was like, "What are, what are you gonna fucking do? Like, we're at CVS. Like, do a podcast and try and do something." Uh, because he, he, you know, he just was like, "You, you built up this like goodwill with people. People like you, and." Uh, he was like, I know you well enough that if you don't do try to do something creative, at the very least, you're just gonna fucking kill yourself. <laughs> I mean, you know um, what? It, it's it, it, that weirdly, suddenly you you as you exist now, like as I like observe you, really like pushing yourself on Twitter, reply and like having no uh, no preoccupations about it just just kind of shamelessly being like follow me i'm responding look at my I videos i am free as a bird man. that's what i'm saying i'm like i'm like that actually you suddenly really make sense to me yeah and i don't mean that in a in a, in a flippant way i'm i'm kind of i'm very struck by it yeah it's 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 liberating <laughs> because like and also yeah. like you know we were talking about comedy earlier and every i think like it's like with comedy entertainment and all the content stuff now I think so many people just don't know what to do. Everybody's throwing stuff at the wall. And then a lot of people are just following trends and are kind of caught in this like mechanism. Like you see it with podcast, like these comedy podcasts where it's the same revolving door of guests and they're all structured yeah. the same way and they all have the same routines. 
uh like they, they've fallen into this like formulaic thing where it's like we should we are freer than ever with what we're i know it, 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 what's funny is it's self-imposed too it used to be the money men that would like yeah. impose chasing trends on you and now people do it to themselves because yeah. they're chasing the algorithm and, and i just was like well i've already been through the worst of anything that anyone could go through especially anyone trying to pursue uh some sort of entertainment career like i've i've, I've been through the death knell so i was like well right. there's nothing stopping me from just like constantly doing crazy shit and uploading it and seeing what get like what people pay attention to and what gets a following and yeah. it i mean it's paid off like you know the, the youtube channel already has is monetized already I saw, monetized. I saw um i you know i got the titty videos all these only fans girls are asking me to look at their titties um and yeah, I just like I just keep like doing stuff and putting it online and just like sh yeah, shamelessly. But I mean, it's our <laughs> no. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that pejoratively. No, I know. I, well, I, I, I yeah, I just I think like pursuing a fucking entertainment career is already shameful. So you might as well just mm -hmm. approach it shamelessly. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm as free, I'm free as a bird, Nick. I'm <laughs> yeah, man. No, I, uh, I I I admire it. I, I'll tell you what. I uh, unfortunately. I this is my uh, I know you got to go soon. Out. So I got I got I get, I'm going to my girlfriend's about to hop on to her online class so I'm going to I'm going to bounce out but um this was fun man. I, I we talked I feel like we talked about Dale Dickey a little bit more than we oh, talked about MM at Walsh. We so look, look, we covered the topic and that's that's the goal of the show is touch on it enough that it justifies calling the show what it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, then we talk about others. I guess the next time we can really uh, dive into our theories about what OD is going to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm willing to talk about that, dude. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, he's got me again. He got me I, again. I, he, he's got me for life, dude. I, you, I don't think you, whatever. We, we, we'll, we'll get into this next time, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I will play anything he puts out. Yeah uh but yeah i mean thank thank you for doing this uh yeah this was fun this yeah was really let's fun. let's do another one not months from now let's do it sooner than that but i'll okay. uh i'll think of something and I'll, I'll reach out soon folks uh subscribe to the patreon patreon.com slash corn fed with dalton pruitt uh subscribe to uh go to chicago and <laughs> <laughs> Find me. Just come yes. find, find, find me. Find Nick. Me. Yeah, go to Chicago and just scream Nick's name in the streets. I'll come. I'll come around. Yeah. Go to the Bean. Order me a diner grill. Yeah. Go to fucking, uh, what, Ed DeBevix? What's another Chicago place? <laughs> Luminaltis. Yeah, Luminaltis, uh, Second City. You know, just go to all the Nick's stomping grounds. <laughs> um. Anyway, th thank you, right, Nick. Buddy. Thank you, Robbie. This was fun. This was fun. Yeah. And stop.